Where do we stand now? I told you that we're in danger because the separation of powers mandated by the Constitution are being broken up every day. You now have the idiocy of Clinton having line item veto. That means if he doesn't like something, he can go and veto just that line that he doesn't like. That is breaking down the separation of powers forbidden by the Constitution. Also meddling in trade. The President had no right to be meddling in any treaty whatsoever. That is strictly for the House according to the Constitution of the United States. And I've dealt with the Commander-in-Chief situation already. We need to understand the seriousness of the Commander-in-Chief. Lincoln said that if we allow this title, he said we are then putting presidents where kings stood. And he said one of the most hated powers of kings was their ability to make war at their any whim that came to their mind. And if we do not stop this commander-in-chief nonsense with Clinton, that's where we're going to find ourselves. We are already there with Haiti, and we are already there with our troops being sent to Kuwait. I want to tell you that the cost of the Middle East peace so far, to you, the American taxpayers, is $38 billion, and the clock is still running. Jordan was given $4 billion to sign this treaty. The other nations have been guaranteed credits and all sorts of things that will bring up the total to $38 billion for this so-called peace accord in the Middle East to come about. Of course, it's doomed to failure, but that doesn't matter. In the meantime, it makes the President of the United States look good. We need to understand something. I told you today there's anarchy and chaos in Washington. That is because the United States government is a government of strictly limited empowerment. It cannot just willy-nilly go making bills. For a measure to be introduced into the House, it has to be in consonance with or in pursuance of something already in the Constitution. If it is not, it is unconstitutional. And I've looked at 3,000 bills passed in recent years, and every one of them are unconstitutional because they were new things that some lighter than air incendiary fairy head liberal said, well, I'm going to introduce this into the Congress. I'm going to have this law passed, like Dinah Swinstein's 19 assault rifles banned. There's no thing in the Constitution that would allow her to do that. Specifically, the Tenth Amendment is very, very precise, and I can quote you 54 instances where this is mentioned in the Congressional the Annals of Congress, the Congressional Records and Globes. The Tenth Amendment is a restriction on the federal government. Our founding fathers were very frightened to give unlimited powers to the federal government. Daniel Webster said we must cage them like a lion, we must not give them unlimited powers. It is a government of limited powers, but particularly the 18 Amendments and just to make sure that the federal government would understand this, in the 18th Amendment, there's a little title that's very important. It says they can only do things that are necessary and proper. And I want to ask you, is rushing our troops off to Kuwait to protect, to protect the income of the decadent al Sabah family, whose money goes to the Royal Institute of International Affairs Banks in London, is that necessary and proper for the United States to be doing? We don't get any benefit out of that. No. The 18th Amendment, necessary and proper. The 10th Amendment, the police powers of health, education, and police protection are entirely reserved for the states. And I can quote you 48 court cases from the annals of Congress, from the statements made by the Founding Fathers. Those powers were never surrendered to the federal government. Therefore, the federal government has no business interfering in health matters, national health plan, no, bill, no business interfering in crime bills, that's a matter for the states, and no business interfering particularly with the Second Amendment. I was in New York the other day on a radio program, and a very irritated, angry lady said she was a professor of law from, from Columbia. She came in on the program and she said, you don't know what you're talking about. She said, this is not a, it's not a right to bear arms. I, I told her exactly what it was. And she said, well, 
Uh, so is, if that's true, then voting is a right. I said, no, voting has never been a right. The only rights and the only civil rights we got are found in the Fifth Amendment. That's all. Forget the 1868 Act. That was done when the United States, the Southern States, were under occupation. They were an occupied, they were occupied countries. Forget Nicholas Katzenbach's 1964 Civil Rights Act. The only civil rights we've got are those contained in the Fifth Amendment. And health, education, and police powers belong to the states. Mrs. Schweinstein has no right passing a bill <laughs> classifying 19 types of assault weapons. What is an assault weapon anyway? Any gun is an assault weapon. That's what you use guns for. You use it to shoot people or animals or protect yourself. Any gun is an assault weapon. A knife is an assault weapon. You know, now they have this poor almost idiot Brady running around the country. They're using him shamefully to push for gun control. This man doesn't know whether he's Arthur or Martha at the moment. <laughs> this is not an issue of gun control. This is an assault on the Constitution of the United States of America in total. You cannot take one part of the Constitution and attack it and exclude the others. And this is what it is. It is an attack upon the Constitution of the United States of America. We need to understand about GATT. I'd like to go back to that a little bit. Michael Carpenter, the Attorney General of Maine, and 46 other Attorney Generals of the states wrote a letter to Clinton last July, and they asked him, please, Mr. President, let us have a national conference of all Attorneys General of the states on this matter. Clinton refused to answer him. Instead, he got his Hollywood lawyer pal, uh, Mickey Cantor, whose only expertise in the world is uh, running around with a Hollywood crowd. He's a Hollywood lawyer. And suddenly, Clinton puts him in charge of trade. Trade wars, get is piracy. It will destroy the livelihood of the people of this nation. What is the situation facing us right now? There's an attack on the dollar. The gnomes of the bond market are fleeing. I've written a work called The Economic Implosion, Year of Crisis, 1995, in which I predict the collapse of our economic system as we know it today in pursuance of the GATT Treaty, one of the things. I know for a fact that this will be an implosion, i.e. our system will collapse on the ground of which it now stands. It's not going to be an explosion that will scatter everything. And we know that uh, GATT will come in and say how much you can get for your interest. They will also put the International Monetary Fund in charge of our finances. And banking in this country will be in the control of five major banks. That will help to control the situation and further destabilize the country. That is the aim and object of all of this. Once a nation is destabilized, it's very easy to deal with it and push it into a socialist new world order, a one world government. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you today, the time has come for us to recognize that we are 50 individual nations. We have all the rights of an individual nation. We gave only limited empowerments to the federal government. They have grossly, flagrantly, violated the concord that we have with them. Therefore, we, the masters, have the right to go to Washington and tell them, the servants, henceforth, this concordat is severed unless we understand from today all of these unconstitutional measures will be rolled back and a new system will come into being. The Federal Reserve Bank, that private enterprise bank, will be put out of business.